what we've been doing is been trying to do what they do in the book of Acts. We are, um, you know, what they did is they met in each other's homes on a daily basis or they encouraged them on a daily, a daily basis. So that's what we want to do is to encourage and inspire on a daily basis. And I love what we have because now we get to come into each other's homes. You are in my home and I am in your home. So, uh, and we get to encourage one another. So I'm going to give everyone just a few more minutes before we can get on here. I haven't tagged anybody because Facebook has been really crazy about that. Um, they sometimes they won't allow me to uh, tag people for whatever reason. I don't know why. So I'm going to pull up right here to see how I can make some comments. Good. Hey, I can make some comments in here now. So. Um, I want to encourage you guys with the word tonight um, that um, is in Romans 12. And I think this is really, really important because of this shift that's about to take place. Somebody say there's a shift that's going to take place. And it's time to get ready for this shift that is about to happen in the body of Christ. Um, I don't know about you, but... I believe that the prophecy that we heard with Kent Christmas, and I don't know if you've heard it or not, but if you haven't, let me know and I'll send it to you. Just inbox me and I'll send you that prophecy. I believe that it's true and that the church needs to embrace ourselves and to get ready for what God is really wanting to do. Sunday, when my husband was preaching, um, we looked out. And even when I was leading worship, I saw people um, weeping and crying and desperate for a touch from God. And there are people right now that are desperate for a touch from God. And um, I think we're at the end of the year, but people are at the end of their rope also, and they're ready. I don't know if you've even heard today in Statesboro, can you guys see me good? Let's see, hang on a second. Okay, I'm so sorry. Can you guys see me good now? All right, there we go. We're back connected again. I don't know what happened. Something went off for a minute there. Um, sometimes my Wi-Fi does that. I don't know if you guys have heard here in Statesboro, there was another teenager that committed suicide this morning. He was 16 years old. And this is the fourth teenager within the past couple of months um, that we have heard that has committed suicide. And I'm telling you, the devil is so mad. And it's just time now for the church just to stand up and to take her place and for us not to be ashamed to, to reach out to people and not be afraid. People are going through the hardest times of their lives right now, and they don't know how to deal with um, the pressure and deal with what's going on. So uh, I've been really, that's my husband. Can you hear that? <laughs> He's rearranging some things over there. Um, anyway, People are not knowing how to deal with things um, that's going on in, in the world. And they're bringing things home and there is a lot of stress in the home. And I tell you, I was just so grieved by um, what's happening with our youth and what happened with this boy and, and just some of my friends too. It's just a lot of things have been going on. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, tell me, Show me something that you want to tell the people tonight. Tell me what it is that you want to say to your sons and your daughters. And this is what I feel like the Lord is saying. And I really want you to open up your heart right now and to really receive what God is saying because um, I think it will impact your life. I think it will change your life if you will let it. So this is what I feel like has been happening. 
I feel like the world and everything that's out in the world, it has a pattern. You know, like when a person begins to sew, there's a pattern for a dress or a shirt. And when the person gets the material and they begin to make that dress, they follow the pattern that's been set for them, right? So they have the pattern out and they begin sewing. Well, in the same way, the world has a pattern that is set and it is trying to conform everybody to that same pattern. And it's like, if you don't conform to that pattern, you feel rejected or you feel left out or you feel, you know, um, just different, like you don't fit in, you know? <clears throat> so, you know, the, the world is trying to mold you know, some of you have convictions. Some of you don't want to do certain things, but you feel the pressure and the stress of the world trying to mold you and shape you and form you into the pattern that the world wants you to be formed in. For example, the world wants to set a pattern for you for anxiety and fear and worry because it's the way of the world. It's the way they do things, you know? And um, God's people have a different pattern. God's people have a different way. It doesn't mean that we don't fear and we don't have, have anxiety. It means that when those things do come, we run to God and God helps us, you know? He helps us in our weaknesses. And um, so it's important that we are in the right hands and we are letting the, the same God that created the heavens and the earth and spoke everything into existence, it's important for him to be shaping our lives and for our lives to simply be in his hands, right? So... Um, I want to read this scripture to you, and I want to encourage you with this. In Romans 12, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind um, he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, let me tell you how powerful this is. This whole scripture is life-changing. One scripture says, don't be, one translation says, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you know how to renew your mind? Somebody put in the comments, we need to renew our mind. Let's put this down here. Romans 12. Renew your mind. There we go. To renew your mind means that something is happening and something changes in my thought pattern. It means that I'm not thinking like the world and I have a new way of thinking. I am forming a new thought pattern. So the word says that we should take every thought into captivity and we should make it line up and, and make it come in obedience with the word of God, right? So I want to ask you, what have you been thinking on lately? What, what is it that needs to be renewed about your mind? Where have your thoughts been? And because this is what happens, whatever you're thinking about, it will shape your life. Whatever you're thinking about will, will create a pattern in your life. 
and your life will follow your thoughts. Your life will follow your thoughts. That's a good thing to put in right there. Let's put that. Your life will follow your thoughts. <clears throat> your life will follow your thoughts. I'm going to see if where my friend Gazzy is. I don't see her on here. Somebody tag Gazzy for me. There we go. I got her. And one more. Uh-huh. One more person I'm going to tag. There we go. I know these two people, Stephanie and Gazzy, always like to come in with me. But they don't always get my notifications. It's like Facebook. So anyway, um, it's like I, I really see, especially since um, COVID and the pandemic has started, there's been... Um, Whatever has been shaped and formed in our life before that happened, we're now seeing the manifestations of that afterward. We're seeing that our life will follow our thought pattern and it follows our words. So this is what I want to encourage you to do. Paul says this, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because you, when you do this, you will find God's will for your life. How many of you have been asking God what his will is for your life? How many of you have been feeling empty and you're feeling like there's something more? There has to be something more. How many of you have felt heartbroken and grieved over certain things because I feel like God is about to take you on a journey that is going to do something incredible in your life. I feel like God is about to take you down a road of doing a new thing, a completely new thing. And as he's taking you down this road of doing a new thing, he's going to get rid of the old way of thinking. And there's going to be a new way of thinking. And it's going to be different, you guys. I feel like God is going to fill you up. I think we've been in lack. There's been voids in our heart. There's been voids in our life, but God wants to fill every void in your life. I want you to know that. And, you know, it says, don't copy the behavior of the worlds, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, you know, the true way of just worshiping God is just to belong to him. And I want to ask you something very important tonight. And it's a very important question. Are, have you completely given your life to Jesus? Do you really know him? And do you want to get to know him? How many of you just want to get to know him better? You want to spend more time with him? And this is what happens when you fall in love with Jesus, I mean, just sold out, you just fall in love with him, this transformation begins to take place and something begins to shift in your life and you're not even asking God for it. It's just happening, you know? It's just happening. You're not even saying, God, you know... Uh, I want you to do this, 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 and the, no, I'm going deeper with you, God. And as I go deeper with you and I rely on you and my confidence is in you. And how about this? I trust you. Somebody say, I trust you, Lord. Somebody put it in the comments. I trust you, Lord. I trust you completely. And it's like, once you get there, he begins to do something and he's transforming your mind 
and he is taking all the old thoughts out and filling you up with his thoughts toward you. And can I tell somebody this? His thoughts toward you are good and um, they're amazing. I want to end with this one more thing. Get this. The word says that his ways are higher than your ways and his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And you may be thinking, you know, Lord, I don't get this season that I'm in. I don't get what I'm going through. And, and it's like I hear the Lord saying, it's okay that you don't get it because um, I'm God and I'm doing a new thing inside of you. And will you not perceive it when I do it? Will you not know it when I'm doing it? Because I think a lot of times the older we get, we want something to feel uh, familiar. Like, oh, I felt that before. That's the presence of God. Or, oh, I've done this before. And it's just familiar. Or the longer you walk with God. That's what Moses did. He took advantage of God's presence in his life because of what he'd always done, you know. And he missed out on the end of his destiny. You know, we don't want that. I want us to still, I mean, as many years, just keep walking with the Lord. Whether you've been walking with him 10 years, 5 years, 20, or 35 years. You know, let him continue to uh, mold you and shape you and do a new thing. Because guess what? There are no perfect Christians and nobody has arrived yet. Nobody gets it arrived. You know, um, we're all growing with God. I'm growing you're growing, and we're in this together. Somebody say, we're in this together. And we are encouraging each other together, you know? So I said all that to say this, that God thinks differently, you know, than we do. He knows what he's doing. Somebody say, he knows what he's doing with me. And you just need to trust him. Trust him with every step of the way. And trust him with the plans that he has for you. And this is the, the last thought. And it's like I'm seeing things in images right now. All I can see is that God wants to hold you in the palm of his hand. And he wants to shape you into his image. And that's what he is continually doing is shaping you into his image. The world wants to shape the church to look like the world, you know, and um, we had um, a lot of comments on our Sunday morning broadcast, and there was one person in particular that said that nobody needs to be delivered from homosexuality, and God loves them just the way they are, and nobody needs to be free from that. And that's what I'm saying. It's like the world wants to form your thoughts and to our, our uh, fleshly desires to line up with our fleshly desires or whatever we want. We'll just take the word of God and twist it any way that we want to twist it and make things happen for us and say that God's in it. But that's not the way that God is. See, God wants to free you from every soul tie from every unholy um, connection that you have had, unpure, impure connection that you have had. He wants to free you from addictions and strongholds in your life. He wants to set you free of depression, of anxiety and fear. So all you have to do is walk into this relationship with him and just meet him and then he will begin to form and shape you into the person that you have always been destined to become. That's God's will for your life tonight. Well, that's my word for you. That's my word of inspiration. That's my encouragement that I wanna give you guys tonight. Thank you for letting me come into your home. Let me see who all, Kathy Burns said, Lisa Scott, Lisa, I miss you too. 
Kathy, thanks for joining us tonight. I love you, my friend. I love you, Lisa. Let's see who else is on here. Miss Shelby, thank you for joining us tonight. God knows what he is doing and, you know, we need to encourage one another. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? Thanks for joining tonight. Um, just wanted you guys to know that God loves you all so much that um, he wants you to know that he wants you to come to him 100% and just cross that line. You know, some of you have been just waiting for um, God to, to, I don't know, like you want to, you need a lightning bolt to come down and just, uh, you know, wake you up. Instead, he sent me to you tonight just to say, hey, let the Lord mold you and shape you into the person. He is shaping character. He is shaping integrity. He is um, shaping destiny inside of you. And he is making you more like him every day. So um, lean into God. Let him shape you. Let him mold you. Don't let the world, don't follow the patterns of the world. It's really tricky out there. You don't follow the pattern of the world. We got to follow the pattern of God and renew our mind. And the way that we renew our mind is through the word of God. This is my Bible called Inspired. Thank you, Kathy, for introducing me to this. Hey, Allison. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for 30 days of encouragement. Dana has been watching every night. That's awesome. <laughs> She told me I got a message from her tonight. I'm so excited. See, what happens and what we've been talking about is renewing our mind. And the word is what renews our mind. So when you have an old way of thinking and the old pattern and the old habits, you know, the way that you kick those is by having a new thought and a new pattern. And where do you get that from? This is where people go wrong. They don't know how to get a new thought. They don't know how to embrace the new season. Well, what you do is you replace the old thought with a new thought and you make an exchange to Jesus. And you say, hey, Lord, I'm here. I'm ready to give you my anxiety, this fear, my addictions or my broken heart, you know, my insecurities whatever it is, you make the exchange with him. And I promise you, as some of you watched last night, the Holy Spirit just came in this room and I could really feel his presence. I mean, I know he's with me right now too, but last night there was something that was, ooh, I don't know, shifting and, and taking place. I want you to know that the more you seek God and the more you lean into him, the more you will find him and you will begin to feel his presence. I mean, just in a powerful way. Um, some of you guys know uh, my friend Allison. We see that she is on watching with us right now. I have a podcast out, and um, it's just so powerful, her testimony. So if you have not heard the podcast with Allison Listed, I want you to go to the platform where you like to listen to podcasts, whether it's on iTunes or Spotify or Apple, wherever you like to listen, just put in one voice makes a difference, um, Janet Swanson, and then you'll, that podcast will pop up for you right there. And it's life changing. I've had several people to call me, comment, and say this is, this is life changing. This is world changing. If the world gets a hold of this, it will turn the world upside down. And the message of grace that Allison has and restoration and what God has done for her, it's powerful. It's really incredible. So I've enjoyed talking with you guys. I don't want to ramble on, but I do want to look through and see who else is on here. Um, Teresa Minnick, are you still on here? Hey, Miranda, my notifications are finally showing up every time when you go live. Yay! Hey, Rosie, I hope everything's better in your kitchen tonight. We talked a little bit last night. Cheryl, 
Thank you for joining. Lisa, I love you. Vicki Turner, Mandy Taylor, welcome, welcome. I hope you guys are still watching. And it's been an honor to come into your, um, your house tonight or wherever you're at. Brandy Lankford Morrison. Hey there, Sky Hughes and Glenn Rogers, Sharon. Thank you guys for coming on tonight. I hope this has encouraged you. We're on day 23 and we're going to day 30. I've had a lot of people commenting me saying, I hope that you keep going after 30 days because um, I've been listening every night and I really, really need it. And I'm like, well, we'll see what God's going to do. I just know that God told me to do 30 days with you guys and to visit with you. But I promise you this, if we don't do it every day after the 30 days, I promise we will do it once a week or maybe twice a week. So let me know what you would like. If you would, if you, some of you, I don't want to get, you know, wear you guys out every night, you know, coming up here. And some of you may say, hey, I want it every night. And some of you are like, well, once a week is good or twice a week or you know, let's pray about it and see what God wants to do. But we still got seven days. We have a whole week to, to figure that out. One more week together and it will be 30 days. So um, I love you. Thank you for um, bearing long with me. Thank you for letting me come into your house tonight. And I hope this is really ministered to you. I really do. I'm doing this for you. It is helping me too. It really is. Um, I'm so encouraged by it. I can take my glasses off now that I'm not um, reading the Bible. I can't read anything without my glasses. So I guess that happens when you get 50. So I have permission now since I'm 50. You know, I'm so glad to finally get to the age 50. I love it. <laughs> it's better than the alternative, right? <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I love you. I um, hope you're doing good tonight. Allison, I love you, my friend. Shelby, Natalie, Lisa, I love y'all. Kathy, I love y'all so much. And Rosie, y'all have a good night's sleep. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.